It's time for a crypto update. I'm your host, Ben. Let's dive in. We got no time to waste. So what is going on in the crypto markets over the past two days and especially today? UST depegged. This is not a good thing, but what does that mean? If you are a new crypto investor who's gotten in in the past six months, you probably just saw a lot of your investments crash very, very hard. A lot of people are going to have some halfway answers, but I plan on answering everything in this video, so stick around for the entire video. So, we're going to start with this article on CoinGecko, and this was posted yesterday, May 10th, UST DPEG, Terra's biggest test. Now, of course, if you've been following me, Terra Luna is in the Cosmos ecosystem. Yes, this is a problem for the Cosmos ecosystem, but not that big a deal because it's its own separate blockchain and separate currencies. The technology behind Cosmos and all the blockchains of that ecosystem is still intact, growing, and fine. The price reaction we're seeing is because of a whole string of events that have led up to this crash. This whole part is updating from today and yesterday. We'll get to that in a minute, but first, let's go down here where they're saying it started. This is according to CoinGecko. It started with Anchor implementing its highly anticipated semi-dynamic earn rate on May 1st. Now, I think this is not the case. I don't think this is what caused it, and I'll show you later. When it was first introduced, markets were relatively quiet, with prices of major assets moving sideways. With the new update, anchor earn rates are adjusted each month up to 1.5% in either direction depending on the yield reserve. So if the yield reserve increases by 3%, the earn rate will increase by 1.5%. The same goes for decrease in yield reserve, where the earn rate will drop by 1.5% for each month. For the month of May, the earn rate has dropped from 19.5% to 18% due to decrease in yield reserves. However, Anchor has capped the APY to a floor of 15% and a ceiling of 20%. So instead of seeing a slew of withdrawals as anticipated, the total value locked in Anchor slowly increased, hitting a high of $17.5 billion on May 5th. This all-time high coincided with, this is, the, this is very important, remember this, the Federal Reserve meeting announcement regarding rate hikes. In anticipation of this, many crypto investors held stable coins in their portfolio, UST included. However, soon after the Federal Reserve announcement, the total value locked in Acre began to fall gradually while major assets experienced a relief bounce. Major assets, and that is not talking about just cryptos. So moving on, weekend May 7th, May 8th, a couple days ago, the Federal Reserve announcement relief bounce quickly shifted in a full-scale dip. Anchor started experience UST outflows which only worsened over the weekend. Throughout the weekend, over $3 billion was withdrawn from Anchor, resulting in a decrease of 22% in TVL from all-time highs. $3 billion in UST was yanked through a weekend. A number of large redemptions from Anchor, with these wallets bridging their UST back to Ethereum before selling them to other stablecoins, sparked fear amongst smaller investors with many following suit with drawing from Anchor and selling their UST to other stables. Such heavy sell pressure ultimately placed a lot of pressure on the UST peg and it finally broke, causing it to momentarily fall to 98 cents. UST is supposed to be a stable coin backed kind of off of the U.S. dollar. So this account in particular withdrew over $100 million from Anchor before proceeding to send the funds to Binance as well as bridging through Wormhole. Shortly after, a swap of $85 million UST to USDC was conducted on Curve. So we can click on this account. It's going to take us to the Explorer for Terra and show us on the blockchain. And you can see right here, May 7th, there was one execute redeem stable 68 million UST on withdrawal. But you continue to go back through their history. They have been doing this. 
Redeemed stable, 12 million. Redeemed stable, 14 million. This is through May 7th. They were dropping tons of UST. So we know that one account was doing some shenanigans. We don't know who that account is, but we know that it is some person or one entity at least a part of this. Over the course of the weekend, the UST curve pool suffered severe imbalance twice due to massive sell pressure from UST to other stable coins. So people were pulling out of UST. Of course they are. If it's crashing, people's going to panic. That's supposed to be stable. That's supposed to represent their US dollars are not supposed to vanish in one day. On-chain analysis showed that the peg was breached, but also swiftly defended by Wells. Terraform Labs was also forced to remove 100 million in UST liquidity from the pool in order to balance the pools out, which was confirmed by the Terra founder, Do Kwan. But this selling pressure did not stop. Luna is meant to act as a stabilizing mechanism to UST. For example, if UST is trading at 98 cents, arbitragers can buy it and redeem it for a dollar of Luna. Therefore, the price of UST is brought back to the peg by arbitragers buying it up. Over the weekend, with UST below peg, UST was purchased and redeemed for Luna, which was then dumped on the open market. Hence, huge selling pressure caused Luna to free fall, exacerbating overall bearish sentiment in the wider crypto market. Now, I was very bullish at the beginning of this year on Ethereum and on altcoin run. I thought we may have seen it here in May. I was totally wrong about this, obviously. But of course, this is not an accident that happened. This could be considered a black swan event, which has happened in the stock market in the past and usually caused by some outer interference in to the free market cycle which right now I'm also doing a series on cycles of economics on the framework fortune home channel that will back a lot of what I'm saying on this while the events over the weekend may have spooked some investors May 9th May 10th was when things really turned ugly as USD holders continued selling the drop caused the cascade liquidations on Anchor. So UST depegged for the third time in three days falling to a low of 60 cents. And actually it's even been lower than that. So withdrawals accelerated rapidly still since Monday falling another 11 billion. 80% of the drop in total value locked in the past 48 hours are from Anchor and Lido alone. The total value for the Terra ecosystem now stands at $9.6 billion, which is a 55% drop from the peak of $21.7 billion. So the Luna Foundation Guard, the council, acted fast to make available $1.5 billion in funds, half in Bitcoin, half in UST, on May 9th to OCT trading firms in preparation to defend the peg if needed. However, you can see this has not worked. They were sent to Binance and OK. X at the same time on chain operations defend the peg also begin. So now we're going to move on to the next article, and this is on decrypt. This was posted today as well. And this article, if you want to learn more about stable coins, explains them even better. Stable coins are assets pegged to the price of a single asset, typically a fiat currency such as the dollar. The first generation of stablecoins such as Tether maintain their price using a basket of assets including fiat reserve. Decentralized stablecoins try to avoid these governance issues by maintaining their pegs through algorithms instead of through vast reserves of cash and debt. The algorithm that the Luna blockchain uses for UST to stay pegged to the US dollar is going to be calculating the US dollar and not incorporating the inflation rate or the true inflation rate, which I just did a video on about the consumer price index and how the Federal Reserve changed it in the 80s and 90s to suppress true inflation so people would not freak out and other reasons as well. So we'll go through this paragraph here really quickly that shows how UST and Luna works. So stick with me. We're going to get into the juicy parts here shortly. So to maintain its stablecoin's equilibrium, Terra mints and burns tokens while also incentivizing arbitrage. Before you can buy UST, you'll have to mint some. To do so, you'll pay the ongoing rate in Luna. 
The protocol takes those Luna and birds them, which constricts their supply and makes the price of Luna go up just a bit. So that was this big spike on Luna. Tons of people coming in to cryptos with billions of dollars of US dollar and turning it into UST. And that caused Luna's price to skyrocket all the way up to those highs of 118. One thing I've said in the past about Luna on the channel on the crypto updates is how long can it go up for I don't know because as long as there's people adopting into UST it could just continue to go up according to their algorithm until it doesn't like it did today so the same works in reverse to mint Luna you'll convert UST stable coins and those get burned in the price of UST goes up ever so slightly. The last thing I want to pull out of this article that is very important here is in a hearing on May 10th yesterday, U.S. Secretary Janet Yellen cited UST's collapse as yet another reason that stable coins need to be regulated in 2022. Of course she did. She has been saying with no basis for a while along with other politicians in government centralized governments that do not like the idea of decentralization that they need to regulate these stable coins until now they had nothing to back this this just gave them ammo or did they give themselves ammo now to the juicy part meanwhile while this has all been going on let's talk about what's happened this year with all the markets and a timeline throughout the last 20 years or so of shenanigans by the federal reserve after the 2008 housing market crash in the u.s the federal reserve started doing large-scale asset purchases or in their favorite made-up words quantitative easing from November 8th to March 10th, the first round of these assets included purchases of $175 billion in agency debt, $1.25 trillion in agency MBS, and $3 billion in longer-term treasure securities. Following the completion of the program, the Federal Reserve rolled over maturity securities consistent with historical practice. So this is not the first time they've been doing QE. 1922, I believe it was somewhere in the early 1920s. Woodrow Wilson signed the Federal Reserve Act, enacting a centralized bank and Federal Reserve in the United States. 1980s, the U.S. dollar was completely turned into a fiat currency, which just means it is a currency backed by the government's word. Before it was on the gold standard, it was backed by some type of actual value. When the fiat currency is backed by the government's word, and it's just fiat, it's just a click of a button, to make more of it, then they can easily manipulate that inflation or deflation. Exactly what QE is, manipulation of the fiat currency. So if the Federal Reserve can manipulate the U.S. dollar, then no stable coin can exist off of the U.S. dollar that is going to not be victim of Federal Reserve manipulation. But moving on on this timeline, I'm not going to read through all of these. They continued these buying of assets, 2008, 2010, 2010, 2011, 2011, 2012, 2012, 2014. And then the balance sheet started to normalize, which this is what is called tapering, when the, when the feds begin to reduce its security holdings to normalize that size of its balance sheet. Basically, they buy a bunch of assets in U.S. dollar to try to hold up the stock market, the housing market, all of that, keep the currency strong or a looking strong. And then when everybody gets confidence back in the U.S. dollar, and this includes globally because we take our loans out from other countries by giving them treasuries and bonds that they're supposed to get interest back on. All this manipulation of the U.S. currency has caused tons of problems, including the wealth gap that has happened in the United States. It is the main reason why. All the other things that people talk about have nothing to do with it. By the natural laws of supply and demand, you are adding more supply 
and when people are less interested in it, there's less demand, then the purchasing power of that currency will drop. And that's what we just saw with UST. So all this can be clearly confirmed on a chart. This is the United States Central Bank balance sheet. Right here was 2008, if you look down here. 2008, their balance sheet, they loaded up the central bank, the Federal Reserve, on assets, like they said. They continued to load up, load up, load up. 2017, they start to sell off assets. And then at the end of 2019, the repo market went upside down. And this was covered up. There's not a lot of people who've heard about that, but all you got to do is just Google repo market 2019 uh, crash. Then 2020 started, and we got covid and we had a COVID dip and they started buying more assets and their balance sheet is way, way up here. They were just going sideways selling nice little bits until about the middle of April where they started dumping a little bit of stuff and have been dumping since. And that is the tapering. They announced this. They're going to start tapering in December 2021. When we see that on the balance sheet chart, of them buying these assets back. And the Fed's expected inflation to abate in the second half of 2022, which it hasn't. We just saw it spike up to 8.5%. And as I said before, the new CPI that they use is not actually accurate for measuring inflation. So you can see it's kind of dipped here right around this same time that they are doing the interest rate hikes. But the NASDAQ has been dropping, of course, since they started this. The NASDAQ futures, the stock market, all of that. Because who is going to buy from the feds? If you were buying at the top of these all-time highs in the markets, you're buying from the Federal Reserve selling to you this whole entire year because they announced they were doing it. Now we take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Federal Reserve, as I've been saying, 1970s, 1980 is about the time they took the dollar off of the gold standard, finally nailing the coffin for that. And the dollar has been on a downtrend ever since then and still is and was getting rejected at this major resistance line right here around the beginning of April. Guess what all of a sudden started breaking out right around the time that all this is starting with UST, the US dollar index. And it is now at the downtrend. The US dollar strengthening when we're at high inflation does not make any sense. And I've been asking that question. Why is this dollar strengthening? Of course, when money comes out of other assets and goes back into US dollar, for example, say UST, the US dollar index shows strength because all the value transferred from that example, UST, got transferred back to US dollars. Of course, you're thinking that probably makes sense, that reaction on the charts would show, but the timing of that interest rate hike, the timing of what the Federal Reserve has been doing with tapering, and the timing of UST all of a sudden crashing, and it did have a little effect on the US dollar, you can see there, May 4th, but the US dollar index was already propped up, ready, as it would seem, by this perfect buying straight up last week of April. So if I was the Federal Reserve of a country who's in control of the world reserve currency, that is slowly losing its status as the world reserve currency. So knowing that your fiat currency that you've been fake artificially holding up for a very long time is starting to lose its footing. The U.S. economy has been in shambles. The asset markets have been absolutely insane. And because I'm centralized, my enemy decentralization has been growing, maybe I could figure out a way to use that to my advantage. They've been trying to scare people out of cryptos for a while until they regulate them. Why do they want to regulate cryptos so bad, including stable coins, is because they want to be able to tax them. But it would be real important to me 
as a central bank to maintain the strength of our fiat currency by attacking our direct enemy and causing that market to look very, very weak and make our market look very, very strong. At the same time, the U.S. dollar has strengthened and looks so good, we are at a possible support level in the stock market where investors are starting to think, hmm, these prices are kind of looking good if they have some belief that the U.S. dollar is strengthening and that the Feds actually do have control over inflation. Now, can I prove that the Feds did this? That's why I'm wearing the tin hat. But we switch over to their reserve assets table and we look at this and this is directly from federalreserve.gov. This is their website. They have been decreasing foreign currencies. Now, we don't know exactly what these foreign currencies are. I'm sure there's a possible way to look it up. But if they are using a rigged consumer price index in the first place to measure the inflation of this U.S. dollar currency, but who's to say foreign currencies doesn't include cryptocurrency? Because all a foreign currency is, is a currency outside of the U.S. dollar. And they started decreasing in March, and we've not got the numbers yet for how much of the foreign currencies and this other fund that they started decreasing right about the same time as that dollar was strengthening. And then now here, all of a sudden, as Elizabeth Warren is saying, we need to regulate cryptocurrencies. We have this very specific dump in UST about the exact same time. Maybe it's all just coincidence and I'm crazy. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Does it mean that the crypto market is done for? Absolutely not. Bitcoin, Ethereum, these other blockchains don't care. They did get affected, but that is because billions and billions and billions of dollars just dumped out of a stable coin that is supposed to be the safe investment for cryptos. That stablecoin decreased a whole lot more than Bitcoin or Ethereum did. And Bitcoin is still right here in its channel, right around that $30,000 area, uh, already starting to have a little bit of a bounce today. Because the actual effect of USD crashing really has no bearing on the rest of the crypto market. Same thing with Ethereum. Ethereum has gotten down all the way to 2000 already, seeing a little bit of buying pushing up off there. But the interesting thing is, as I'm recording this, UST dropped all the way down to that 25 cent area yesterday into today, but has already almost rebounded back to the dollar if it stabilizes which it could it may not who knows they're trying their best to stabilize it that would bring confidence back into the crypto market and we could see a very fast rebound causing all that money that just flooded back into usd to flood out of usd possibly causing what happened to ust on this big nasty drop that happened to USD, the US dollar index. Because remember, the US dollar index is in that 40-year downtrend. It's already bearish. And as you look back on the chart, anytime the US dollar has spiked, it has been followed by a massive drop anyway. Now, when we look at the NQ from 2000 all the way to now, the NASDAQ has been one of the biggest movements especially after the 2008 crash because of all the Fed buying. Now the Feds are no longer buying. The NASDAQ is coming down. And like I said, a lot of people think that that 12,000 area could possibly hold because of this support, except for it cracked today. As the UST is strengthening, gaining some strength back, 
the NASDAQ is still dropping and it has a long way to go if the feds do not want to hold it up or can't hold it up anymore. And what has been happening since about that April, March time, NASDAQ was making lower highs and lower lows right before they started decreasing those foreign currencies. So if that money that was yanked out of UST and all that money that's been yanked out of the crypto market is not going into the NQ, it's not going into the US stock market. Well, what's it going into? Looking at this total market watch, gold should have seen a bigger gain. It did see a decent little gain rebounding off of this big sell-off that it had in the market around that same time, but none of the precious metals really getting much going on. Just to throw something else added into the mix, the nickel market had a humongous short squeeze that was enacted in part due to JP Morgan Chase Bank and a super rich Chinese tycoon CEO, and they got squeezed out of it. So at the same time, right here in March, when this huge short squeeze on physical metal nickel futures happened with the whole Ukraine-Russian war, people went to buying gold and silver and nickel and other metals, including Putin himself. So that buying pressure caused the price of nickel to skyrocket in March, putting JP Morgan Chase and a few other companies who were trying to hold down the prices of nickel with short futures in a very bad position. This does not always happen. They've been getting away with doing this in the metals market for a very long time, but the easiest way to control people is control the currency, right? Everything you do and everything you need to survive, you have to pay for in US dollar, including your taxes, which if you don't pay your taxes, you will go to jail. Again, not a free market principle, but when your whole life is based off a currency that they can control, then they have control over you. And that's why they hate decentralization in cryptos because they lose that control. And the U.S. Federal Reserve would get the most benefit out of anybody else in the world right now to cause such a disruption. So I think what they were planning was trying to get people back into the stock market to buy from them so they can continue to unload assets without crashing the market. But because the currency and the stock market has been inflated, bigger institutions know that, and like I said, other countries know that as well. And I believe that's why we're not seeing the NASDAQ have any rebound. So we go over to the cryptos list, and of course a ton of stuff is down, but projects that I'm constantly watching, IMX, uh, Mutable X, you know, down because of Ethereum dropping so hard. This project's under 71 cents. We know there's absolutely nothing wrong with Immutable X. Immutable X is thriving at the moment, including they have staking coming very soon. U.S. public node validator BTCS Inc. and our good friend Charles Allen, CEO of BTCS, just announced that they are adding Axie Infinity to their node validating. If they're adding, that means they're buying. And that's not the only thing that node validator is buying. BTCS has a lot of big plans in store that they're working on for stakers in the future for all the different blockchains that they validate for. And going back to this market watch, if you've heard me talking about PKT, which I'm about to put out a ton of content on, PKT, its own blockchain internet bandwidth mining, has been holding up better than most of the markets. It had a little dip during this crypto dip, but that was after it just spiked on May 4th up over a penny. This was about a 60% jump on that day. The price is not reflected that much concern for people in PKT trading. Of course, this is a very new project, but like I said, we'll be diving into it quite a bit. So there is a lot that could transpire at this point. Until UST stabilizes, 
I have no idea of the timeline of when we could see the crypto rebound. Even if it's not the Federal Reserve or whoever it is trying to cause these crazy issues with currencies right now, we could see more of this happening, just like we saw in the nickel market just like we're now seeing in UST. None of this changes my opinion about blockchain technology. It only strengthens the idea of we need decentralization so we don't have these crazy outside interferences in the free market. In the next video that I post will probably be the most important video I've ever posted and could be the most important video that I ever post in my entire life.